Um, so I probably, I don't know if I've talked about what I do. So I'm actually a, a, a co-founded this nonprofit called our open sci and that's the website right there. And uh, we make, we basically just make our packages. That's all we do. Uh, but we try and focus on data. So we try and close the gap of this sort of the cycle of, uh, of science workflow where often people are going out to browsers to get data and then open them in Excel and then do some things and then finally get it in R. And so we're sort of trying to close that gap uh, for, for the data specifically and then sort of branching out from there. But, uh, but anyway, that's what, that's what I do. Um, and so this talk is here at that website, uh, recology.info talks request. And uh, this just means that you can reuse it. So, um, so this is just to, to motivate what I'm going to talk about. So this is just a quick example of something you could actually do. You could copy and paste this right now into R and it, it should work after you install these packages, of course. Um, so does anybody um, know that about the uh, CRAN logs API? Um, it's pretty cool. There's a um, Gabor, um, this guy Gabor maintains a, a sort of uh, an API for the CRAN logs data that's from the RStudio CRAN mirror, which probably most of us use. <laughs> if you use RStudio, then you're by default using the RStudio CRAN mirror, which is, is really nice because it's sort of, um, it's CDN and all that, so it's really fast everywhere. Um, anyway, so there's an API there. So we're saying we're loading these three libraries, then we're saying API, and we're putting the base URL in, and then there's, of course, a path, so we're getting uh, API path trending. And so we're using, as you can see, we're using lazy evaluation there because we're not quoting the trending. And then we're, that, that basically gets some data, and then we're, go, and then we're going down to dplyr, um, mutating, uh, we're changing the increase to a numeric because it was a character, uh, arranging the table, getting the top 10, and then making a plot. And so obviously the, I, this talk isn't going to be about the dplyr or the ggplot stuff, but uh, the request, the HTTP request stuff is what, uh, I think that, that that example right there shows you a small example of how it can be easier than, than what the current easiest way to do it is. <laughs> um, so a little bit about, I'm going to go, sorry for boring the people that already know this stuff, but a little bit about APIs and HTTP and what, what all those things mean. Uh, so APIs are programmatic instructions for how to interact with a piece of software. And these can be lots of different things. Uh, a software package, an API can be, you can talk about an API as the API to an R package. So the exposed functions that are meant for users to sort of interact with, or a Python package or a JavaScript package or whatever. Um, it can be a public web API like that one we just talked about, the CRAN logs API. Uh, it can be an API to, a, you know, a database, a SQL database or MongoDB or whatever. Um, and it can be a network, it could be an API to an operating system. Uh, and then HTTP is uh, the most common way in which um, in terms of web APIs, uh, HTTP is the most common sort of protocol that is used to, for these web APIs. Um, and the very, very short synopsis of what that is, is it, it defines a, a number of verbs for different actions. Um, and you're probably familiar with get as the most common thing when you want to get data. Um, you know, you go to any, so you open up your browser, go to some website, you're, you know, you're performing a get request. So that's a type of HTTP verb. Um, it defines how you do authentication. It defines status codes. So, you know, when you make a successful request, you know, you load New York Times and it opens fine, uh, that would be a 200. So it would be success. Everything went as, as expected. Um, it defines how to, to, um, how to make a request to an HTTP server and, and what that, and how to give a response back from an HTTP server. Um, and yeah, like I said, most REST APIs use HTTP. So here's a little cartoon of the verbs, uh, some of the more common verbs. So get is as a read, just think of a get request as a read, a post request as a create. So most of the times you're not going to have access to a server to do post, put, or delete. But if you do, if you have access, then post is a, a sort of a create, think of a, think of a, uh, a data frame or a, a table. So in a post, you're going to create a, another row, for example, like you put a new user into that table. Uh, a put is a, is a sort of update. So you want to update just the email field for a particular user. And then a delete request is maybe you want to delete an entire user. Let's say they, um, uh, 
you know, somebody left your community and you, you know, want to delete the record for them. Um, so the easiest solution right now, I sort of mentioned this on the first slide, uh, is with, with uh, HTTR. Um, so, so a little example of how we might make a request. Uh, so we load HTTR. Uh, we're, and here we're using the, the GitHub API. If you haven't used the GitHub API, it's really nice, really great documentation. Um, so this is an unauthenticated request, as you can see. There's no, not dealing with any authentication here, but it still works. Um, it's just that our rate limits are very low. But anyway, the, uh, so we're here, we're making a get request with the capital all caps get function, and then we put in our URL, and here we're getting issues from the dplyr uh, repository on GitHub, and so there, there are a lot of them as dplyr is very, very popular. Um, and then we assign that to an object X, and then um, we're going to check and make sure that the stop for status function checks and makes sure that there wasn't a bad status code. So a bad status code would be anything like in the 400 series or the 500 series um, that it would indicate a client error or server error. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is extract the text. So uh, we use the content function for that, and um, best practice is often to extract plain text uh, and, and then um, and specify as particular encoding, and that's often UTF-8. And so we want to extract plain text, and then if it's XML or JSON, whatever it is, use, use the proper, the best tool for converting that plain text to a parsed version of whatever that data is. So in this case, it's uh, the API, the GitHub API gives back JSON, so in this case, case it's uh, JSON. And so that's not super complicated. It's pretty easy. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, they could be using R curl. It's it used to be the most popular package, but it's all the same stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so that was the so on this slide we're talking about sort of the easiest way to make a, a HTTP request now, and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I said, um, the GitHub API, you can you can do unauthenticated requests, but uh, you have a very low rate limit. I think it's like 60 requests per hour or 10 minutes or something like that. Um, but yeah, you can easily add that. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so this is where uh, the package that I've been working on for a while comes in. It's called request. And you may have heard of the Python package requests. And that's why I decided not to use the word requests because I didn't want to confuse people. Um, but uh, anyway, there it is on, on GitHub. It said Scott request, and uh, it's also on CRAM. And so the, the inspiration for um, this package came from HTTPy. Does anybody use HTTPy? So it's a, it's a Python uh, library. You can use it in Python. But uh, I think the main way I use it, and maybe a lot of people do, is on the command line. So it's a great... A uh, great little tool combined with all kinds of other tools you can use on the command line for making HTTP requests, parsing like uh, parsing to JSON, typing to something else, whatever. Uh, and um, one of the one of the, the cool things that HTTPy does is make assumptions about um, the most common things that you're going to want to do when you're making an HTTP request. And and that's sort of the the motivation for this package. Um, so philosophy of request package, in a nutshell, it's basically to simplify uh, to common patterns. That's pretty much the whole philosophy. Um, but specifically, uh, we try and return, um, return data from an API nowadays is uh, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, it was very different. Uh, but now, it's likely to be JSON. Um, and I'm not, and probably maybe in a, Internally within a company, you might have a lot of SOAP APIs that are returning XML, but <laughs> in the public world, uh, we're using public APIs or mostly uh, often JSON. Um, and so you likely want to um, get data. That's the most likely thing you're going to want to do that people are going to do is get some data. Um, so we make a get, re we assume you want to make a get request. And then um, we try and give back data frames if at all possible, especially with the um, the introduction of dplyr and, and data table as well. 
Uh, I think that a lot of people are sort of organizing their workflows in, in the context of data frames rather than, say, lists or something. Um, so we try and give you back a data frame if possible. Then you could go immediately downstream to manipulating the data, visualizing, et cetera. Um, and then uh, non-standard evaluation. Uh, we assume that, you know, this, this package request is, is targeted at people that are using it interactively rather than programming with it. So maybe, i.e. using it as a, like a dependency in another package. So, uh, so the NSE by default is, is what we assume, but you don't have to use uh, non-standard. Uh, in non-standard evaluation versus standard evaluation. So uh, here, so the, that second line of the code where it says API underscore path trending, that trending is doesn't, like that's not an object that already exists, right? Because um, I hadn't defined it yet. But, but uh, so I'm using non-standard evaluation there because I'm sort of lazily evaluating that. So I can pass that in and in turn inside of that function, it's just sort of, it's collecting that information, but it hasn't, doesn't evaluate it when you call the function. And it just, it saves a little bit of time. And you, I mean, just, you know, typing one function call with NSE doesn't save a lot of time, but if you add that up over all the work that you're doing then. Okay, so, um, so for installation, if you want to get the develop, uh, the stable version, it's on CRAN, you just do install packages. Uh, and the GitHub version, um, you can use install GitHub, and you load the package. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these boring slides and move to some live coding. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so I'm using the, I think the preview version of RStudio, so it, it's a little bit like iPod on Notebook where it will execute in the, in the pane, that's why I don't have the, the other tab open. Um, wait. So, so I'm going to go through uh, a couple of. You guys see that okay? Is it bigger? A little bigger? Good. So I'm going to go through a few. Um, each of these. This is just Markdown, R Markdown. So each of these uh, double hash labels is a sort of a feature of the package. I'm going to demonstrate that real quick, um, just to sort of run through the features, so you can see the main main things going on in the package. And this code is um, this code is at um, Scott talks and then uh, request if you want to even try it right now. And so it's just at this uh, code.rmd file. So um, this this function API is the function you want to start with uh, when using request, uh, and it it handles all kinds of different uh, URL patterns. So you can put the full U URL in with the uh, scheme, the HTTP or HTTPS. Um, you can totally leave that out and it does the same thing. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so if we just put the port in, then it gives us 9200, local is 9200. Uh, HTTP, yeah. But I assume most people aren't going to be using secure HTTP and localhost. Does anybody do that? No. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I should maybe I should support that somehow. I don't know. But anyway, that's what we start with, uh, and that actually that function actually doesn't do NSC. You have to quote. Um, because there's all kinds of slashes and weird things, but I, but maybe I could make it NSC. Um, and then, so you, so you define the base, the base URL for your request um, with this API function. And here we're um, doing um, using the GitHub API now. And, and like I said before, we don't have to put in the HTTP colon slash slash stuff. And then the next thing we want to do is pipe that to that API path function you saw before. And um, that, and that's a way to 
path means that we're adding paths to the URL. So here we're doing api.github.com slash orgs slash open our open size slash events. And then this um, so this this feature that I'm talking about right now is examining requests. So um, sometimes like you may not want to especially if your request is going to take a long time or if you're not sure what's what the request is actually you know, you're not sure what it's going to look like, the URL and the queries and the path and the body and all that. Um, you can use this function called peep and it will um, it will show you as sort of like a little, a little, there's a print state, there's a print function for uh, the class that comes out of that. And so it shows you a, a little summary of what you have, um, the base URL, the paths that are going to get appended to that URL um, and, any, and any of the other sort of stuff you add to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. So this, so peep is just, um, so, so if I didn't use peep, if I said, if I just did this, what that I'm highlighted over right now, it would execute the request. So one of the features downstream on this file is, um, that, uh, the, so the guy that um, made Magritter, which these pipes come from, um, he helped me implement a little thing where uh, we sort of detect that the, the last function you used after a pipe is, so we execute the HTTP request after that. And so, so if, we, if we do this highlighted thing, we would actually execute the request. So peep just says, don't execute the request. Collect all the information that the user has given me and give a little summary. So it doesn't go to the, out to the API and give you anything. And that's some, so peep is similar to, I think in DeepFire it's called glimpse, something like that, where it gives you a little summary of, 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 of the, of the object. Um, so. And then the next, the next function is uh, paths and we've already sort of gone over this. Uh, and obviously stuff.com is not a real, a real thing, but um, so if we just execute that itself, we get a, a URL and then if we do API path, um, and we put in the red fox, then we get uh, the red fox would get appended to stuff.com when we make the actual request. Um, so that's API path. And then path templating. So there's, um, has anybody ever used, uh, has anybody used Whisker, the Whisker package in R? Is, is this is sort of like a, a templating, every programming language has a version of this. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, and so, so if you want to do um, this, uh, so you have some data in a list, you have user equals A, repo equals B, and then you can use API template to say, I want to put, I want to have this particular pattern and then input the data as the, the object and then you get that. Um, so the, the, the one problem I have with API template is it's not showing up correctly in, in the, the, uh, the, print function, the print thing there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that. <laughs> But the request actually still works. It just doesn't show uh, in the print statement correctly. Uh, the next thing is query. So, uh, so you know, after after the paths, the base URL, the paths, we said the red fox stuff.com, the red fox question mark. So everything after the question mark are query parameters, right? So um, here we want to do um, we want to go to stuff.com. And we wanted the Q, the Q parameter to be ecology. We want to search for, I was an ecologist, so, so I, I want to know about ecology things. And then, uh, and then WT equals JSON. So this is, you solar people will know that that's a solar, a solar API. And so we want to get um, JSON data back. And so we can execute this and it'll add, you can see the query thing in the print, uh, the print uh, statement has uh, the, our query parameters printed for us. So that those will get appended to the end of the URL question mark Q equals ecology w, WT equals JSON. And then pipes. Um, so so the pipes you don't have to use pipes but you can use them. And so like I said the we detect the last pipe piped um, function. We execute the HTTP request after that last one. Um, so if we do HTTP bin.org slash get API, 
pipe that into the API function, then we actually execute the HTTP request. If we do the same thing, but we but we don't pipe it into H, uh, we don't pipe it. We just sort of um, use the API function. We if I just run the API function, I get the URL, uh, and then to actually execute it, I have to call HTTP function directly. And so that that function HTTP here is what is actually executed when we do that sort of last pipe detection secret sauce. Um, but you can you can call HTTP uh, directly on uh, unpiped. If you're doing this sort of unpiped workflow, you can still execute it, um, the request it yourself. So this is the um, evaluate on last pipe feature. Um, so I just ran this one for you. And then uh, I basically just went through this. Um, yeah, so I already went through that. Um, so NSC and SC. So NSC is a non-standard evaluation again. SC standard evaluation. Um, so just like um, dplyr has sort of, um, you know, it has mutate and then mutate underscore, or select and select underscore. We have the same thing here where, um, so API path here is, you know, you can use, you can put in unquoted variables, and then down here, we're using API path underscore, and then you could put in quoted variables. So that would be much easier to program with, right? So you could use this package in another package or script or whatever where you're putting this inside a function and you want to pass in some named, you want to pass in some uh, some quoted variables. So uh, automatic post with body. So this is something that HTTPy does, the, that Python client I mentioned. Um, so if you um, if you go to httpen.org post uh, and you that lets you submit a post request to this sort of test server on the web um, and then you say API body so you want to add a, add a body it um, will automatically make a post request so there's nothing in here about specifically making a post request right um, but it um, should do it so so that's uh, the output that we get and it and it showed us that here's the the body that we had sent, and, it, and basically, this this HTTP bin.org is like a you you show you give it something, and it gives you back what it get, what you gave it. <laughs> so it's a fun it's a fun way to sort of test out making HTTP requests. And then there's a little um, write to disk helper. So in the um, HTTP in HTTR library, there's a write disk. And so that's a little helper to help you if you want to write directly to disk rather than getting the object back in the R session. It'll um, take the output um, of the HTTP response and write it directly to disk and then just return the path uh, into, you know, HTTP response sort of metadata. Um, and so so we do that here too. We say um, you can go api to github.com and then we want to get that same thing we had before, our OpenSci events, and then uh, we can say API write to this uh, temp file, and then that gives us the path um, to this temporary file where that data was written. And then we could say read lines to that temp file. Ah! <clears throat> There's the data. So anyway, that's uh, I have a few a few more slides and we're done. So that's the package. That's a little rundown of the features of the package. Um, one of the big problems that we have is that uh, the last pipe thing is pretty cool, um, and dplyr does it, and I, but we can't use what they do because they do it on the C. They drop I think they do it on the C plus plus level, and I don't really want to deal with that. Um, so so anyway, if you try and pipe. Uh, API and then pipe that to API path and then pipe that to something else that's not in this package, you get an error. So um, so we definitely need to work that out because we want people to be able to pipe this stuff into something else. You can still assign that to an object and then proceed with your pipe workflow, but for right now that's not, not ideal. Um, and then one of the big to-dos um, and I think big wins for users is going to be paging. And so I'm going to try and make this super easy. And as you, as veterans in the room have that, that have used APIs a lot, there's so many different ways that APIs do paging. 
Um, in terms of the parameters that you use, some some people, some uh, APIs use a cursor where you get some big long string back, and then you've got to add that to the next request, or you do it with query parameters. Um, and, and sometimes it's page and per page, sometimes it's uh, rows, uh, sometimes it's limit and max, max, blah blah. You know, there's so many different combinations. Um, but this is a sort of a quick example of um, how I'm going to try and make it work. Is you know, we're going to the this uh, GBIF API, which is for sort of biodiversity data, species occurrence data. We want to go to the occurrence search path, and then we want to add some, some query parameters here. And then for paging, the idea is that um, we just have a few of these little helper functions where we'd say limit and then uh, offset. So we'd say limit is the max number of results you want to get, and offset will be where do you want to start? You want to start at the zero with record or the tenth record. And then you can pass in, you know, limit, limit equals four. So you could, so no matter what um, the API's parameters are, it would, it would still work. Um, so anyway, that's something on the to-do list. Um, and then rate limiting. Rate limiting is another um, sort of pain in the butt when you're working with APIs that have rate limits. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to structure it yet, but these are just some, some ideas and some examples of how uh, it might be structured. Uh, but and there's no way. A lot of the problems in this package is there's sort of no way. Like there's, I can think of how to make it easier, but it's it's hard to because REST APIs, HTTP APIs are so variable, and there's no sort of one standard way to do it. Um, the user has to give some input. Like what what are the what are the what are the rate limits on this API? Um, and then I can then then we can sort of help the user um, deal with rate limits when they when they hit them. And that's it. Um, there's the talk link again, the package, it's got request, and 